Hi, class. How you doing? Are you Old Testament scholars? Um, first of all, I just want to tell you that I thoroughly enjoyed uh, teaching the class. I came um, right from uh, Bible doctrines, and then I would come on over, um, and I, I really put a lot of energy into the Bible doctrines, and I would go an hour and a half, and I would walk over to Rebels, and I would go like, whoa, Lord, I'm kind of tired right now, want a break. But there was always two things that got me excited. One was the passage of Scripture in Joshua that we were about to cover, and two was you guys. And I, I really enjoyed you all, and I, I, I want you to know that I appreciate your participation, uh, answering the questions, the engagement that we had. Uh, so please, um, please know, you guys were an encouragement to me. And isn't it true, I said this in, when we went over the syllabus, um, that the book of Joshua is just so perfect for college students. What you guys are going through and what you guys are about to go through in your lives, I feel like the book of Joshua covers so much of that. And I uh, hope it was a help. I hope it was a blessing. And I pray that the truths of the book of Joshua will go with you the rest of your life. You'll never teach it, study it, read it, um, and live it without it not meaning much more to you than it ever has. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through now, and I would jot things down. I don't know how you do it. You can use, use an electronic um, device to do this or whatever. Uh, but I'm going to go through basically everything that is on the exam and, um, uh, and, and to let you know. Now, number one, there's a lot of true-false, and I'm not going to cover every true-false question in this review. So it would do you well to go through and just kind of skim through, read through the notes. But... I, there are things you will have to know, and I want to share those with you. Number one, what is the theme of the book? Everyone together, wherever you are, what's the theme of the book? That's right, victorious Christian living. And isn't it just uh, a, a great illustration? It's a, like an Old Testament photo album of what a victorious Christian life really is. And what a, what a person goes through living the victorious Christian life. Okay, so now we're going to get going here. Um, I do want you to make sure you go over the Joshua Jewels. This is going to be kind of random, the different things we're going to cover. Um, there were several different things with the Joshua Jewels. Um, like the one about um, positional truth isn't always practical experience. Well, I could see us leaving a blank there in that statement or, or true false or um, whatever. So know something about that one. I think there's some kind of true-false question on every one of the Joshua Jewels. Uh, so make sure you go back through those and uh, just read, study through those. Um, then, uh, then there was the different areas that Joshua used great leadership skills. Um, there's a question about Joshua with the tribe of Manasseh when they said, hey, we need a bigger, don't you realize how great we are? We need some more uh, property. We need some more things. What did Joshua do to, I thought, just incredibly wise to say to, to Manasseh, and what did he tell him to do? Manasseh, you don't need more property. You need to what? That'll be on the test. Um Statements like, um, our greatest test will often follow our greatest victories. That uh, after we have victory, a lot of times the Lord tests us. And I think a lot of times uh, the greatest battles we'll ever face will not be after defeats. I think they'll be after victories. And, and um, just remember that. Okay, so another thing is the whole book is a picture book. A picture book of us. So, who is Joshua a picture of? That should be pretty obvious. What does his name mean? All right. What is the Jordan River a picture of? And what is Jericho a picture of? Um, and uh, so know those because those all three are going to be on the test. Um, know the outline. 
Uh, chapters 1 through 5, obeying the Lord. Chapter 6 through 12, overcoming the land. And chapters 13 through 24, occupying the land. Know that outline. Oh, you're going to need to know all three of those. Um, I think I do give you the chapter division, so you're going to have to come up with the statements. Um, now, a huge part of this test is chapter identification. So you got to have a long list of things on the one side. Uh, uh, by the way, Rahab, the spies, Scarlet Thread, all chapter two. Okay, they're not going to be bunched together, but they'll be throughout that list. Um, the story of the two and a half tribes uh, building the altar. At least that's what the rest of Israel thought. They were building an altar. What chapter was that in? We talked about that at the very end. I think it was the very last thing I talked about in class. Make sure you know that. Hey, do you remember the chapter that the word ark is mentioned more than any other chapter in the entire Bible? I would know what chapter that is. The sun stands still. What chapter was that? Achan's sin. Jericho. The Gibeonites. Memorials. The cities of refuge. What chapter was that in? Uh, Joshua... Uh, Joshua gives the charge to the people. What chapter? Joshua was charged by God. What chapter? All right. So there's going to be a long matching thing. I would go over every one of those. Obviously, there'll be some more than that. So be familiar. When you're, stu when you're going over your notes, think about what chapter is this occurring in? Um, what chapter did Gilgal occur in? And, and so what chapter did they reinstate the Passover? It would be the same chapter then. So uh, if you go through that way, I think that'll really help you. Hey, I got a few few more things. What is the crossing of Jordan a picture of? And there were several things. Know that passage of Scripture in the New Testament, Galatians 2.20. Make sure you always think of that. By the way, what is crossing the Jordan not a picture of? It's not a picture of going to heaven. It's a picture of starting that victorious Christian life, submitting to God's will, um, a higher level in your Christian experience. A whole list of things in there. Know those. And it's not going to heaven. Um, know about how Rahab's faith changed. Different things. He, her view of her family. Her view of God. Um, it ignited. What did, what did Rahab's faith ignite? Go, at least be familiar with those. You're not going to have fill in the blanks with that. But there probably will be some true false questions about Rahab that comes out of that outline. The three kinds of days, college students, all of your life. Building days, battling days, and banner days. Okay, so make sure you get that. Um, here's one area now because it, you, you haven't really been tested on this yet. So it's going to be on your final. You need to know the definitions of every one of the cities of refuge. And I gave you like one word, like Shechem, shoulder, Bezer, fortress. Um, I think there is the one, uh, uh, Ramot, uh, Gilead is exalted position. I think there's two words that. I think everything else just had one word uh, with each one of the, the, the cities. Um, Kadesh, righteousness. Um, and so, so please make sure you know that. There was a whole lesson on the wiles of the devil and the Gibeonites. By the way, what chapter is the Gibeonites in? The wiles of the devil. Walk through, study those, just read through those. There are some true false questions in there. And I do believe, actually, I think there is a little bit of a fill in the blank. There's like a key word in each one of those wiles of the devil. So uh, make sure that you know that key word there as well. Um, you definitely need to know about the four events at Gilgal, all starting with R, remembrance, repentance, restoration, and responsibility. Uh, what's the meaning of Gilgal? Uh, look that up. What does Gilgal mean? Okay, to be rolled back, all right? Uh, so, so know that. Um, and then, you know, like under responsibility, the man of ceased. Was that good or bad uh, for Israel? Make sure you got that. Um, how many tribes are there? All right. Then, how many rocks were put on the memorial? How many portions of land? 
um, were, were divided up and how many tribes. I'm going to let you figure that out. Hopefully you remembered that. Um, how, did defeat, how did it turn defeat into victory? Go through that outline. There will be a couple true and false. I think there's a couple fill in the blanks. They will be the key words if they are. Go through that lesson. I think that will be of great help to you. Um, the running on all cylinders, uh, as you read through there, um, Joshua's prayer. Was it good that he told him that to ask God to have the sun stand still, or was God upset with that prayer? Um, just kind of walk through that. Uh, everyone got to experience victory. Um, I love that chapter, that chapter 10. Uh, go through, they were running on all cylinders. Uh, definition of success. Four steps of meditation. Um, what the land is to Israel, you guys know the rest. Um, I think, now I, I know I've covered a lot. Some of it's generally, some of it very specifically. But um, I encourage you to take your notes out. Maybe watch this video one more time before you take the test. Uh, just minutes before you take the test. Go back through everything that I said. Oh, I got a handle on that. I, I, do, I do know that. Um, you know what, you may miss a true or false question or there may be, you know, one of the blanks that you, you forget or a chapter you can't remember. But overall, if you, if you know everything I just went through, you're looking at an A. And so make sure that you study. Uh, college students, um, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming back this semester. I know it was a good semester and I know it was for you as well. But thanks for taking that step of faith and going into the promised land. And I think some of you really have crossed the Jordan. And you're living that crucified life now. Uh, let me have a word of prayer with you uh, for the test, but also for your vacation. And I hope you take another Dr. Shetler class. And I look forward to seeing you. By the way, there's some good ones. Uh, the relationships in ministry and biblical leadership. I really uh, I encourage you. Uh, to take that class, powerful prayer on Monday nights. It's going to be a great class. So I, I got some that I, I, I pray that you'll enjoy like you did, Joshua. Father, thank you for our students. Thank you for these that have uh, been involved with the Joshua class. I do pray that the lessons of the Joshua class will always mean something to them. I pray that they'll get to use their projects one day. Sunday school lesson, devotional guide. I, I, I do, Lord. I pray that it'll be a blessing. Now we pray for the test. No one cheat, Father. May their conscience be strong enough not to cheat on a test. They're going to regret that. Uh, but, Lord, give them some good study time. May as they go through these, uh, these reminders and what's going to be on the test, may it also bring back some good spiritual things as well. And uh, may they look at the, at the book of Joshua in this class as kind of a memorial in their life uh, as well. I pray that you'll be with them. May they do well on the test and study well. Let them know that, that, um, that we want them back, and we want them back soon. For those that are graduating, there's a few of them. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with them in their ministries, and they will live the victorious Christian life. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas, and I pray that the Lord will be, uh, be with you during the vacation. We definitely look forward to having you back. Bring someone back with you as well. Okay, and graduates, praise God for each one of you as well. Bye-bye now.